Uh, Reneuron is a very interesting approach to stroke. I like the fact that we're staying on CNS. Uh, I also follow Athersis, and people have already asked me, you know, what's the relationship between Athersis and Reneuron when we talk about stroke? And I want you to know that I view both companies as very different, but maybe potentially very synergistic. When we talk about Athersis and Multistem, I look at the ability of Multistem to ameliorate some of the uh, immediate ischemic injury that occurs following stroke, and maybe ex expanding the treatment window from the three to four hours that TPA provides to maybe 24 to 36 hours. When we look at Reneuron, we're looking at something very, very different. We're looking at a more powerful cell, a multipotent cell. We're looking at a localized delivery, and we're really looking more similar to Brainstorm, where it's a supercell that through the secretion of powerful factors, GDNF, BDNF, and other nootrophic factors, you might be able to really coax uh, growth and repair in the brain versus atherosis, which is trying to limit the secondary damage. And I understand that Olaf is also going to talk a little bit about the programs in the eye and in macular degeneration. And everyone should be aware that Astellas uh, acquired Okata Therapeutics, the old advanced cell technology. And I think we were talking, it was 390, 376, right? $376 million, which really surprised me, which tells you that there are other people that are looking at the market opportunity and cell therapy as the way forward. I know that this conference has kind of shifted gears and has become more focused on gene therapy. I believe that pendulum can swing very rapidly back to the regen side. So Olaf, take it away. A um, couple of slides. So I'm uh, Olaf Hellebo with uh, Reneuron, and uh, quick overview here. We're, uh, we work, um, everything we do is allergenic, uh, so it, this is not autologous, it's allergenic off-the-shelf um, therapies. Uh, we work in three different indications, all of them are in the clinical stage. Uh, the uh, uh, most advanced is stroke, as Jason mentioned. So this is chronic stroke, we, we treat patients between two and 12 months post-stroke, we actually have data out to five years post-stroke. Uh, this is single uh, treatment. Uh, in stroke, we inject the cells uh, into the brain uh, through uh, standard stereotactic surgery. Um, it is, um, uh, and we, in, we use 20 million cells uh, when we do that. We put these cells very close to the lesion of the stroke. So the stroke leaves a uh, dead scar tissue um, the cells do like to have a healthy environment, so we put them into healthy tissue right next to where the stroke happened um, in order to kickstart repair. Um, we have phase one data on that, and uh, I'll come back and talk a little bit about what the next steps are and what we're doing. We're in phase two for the moment. Um, the, the, the second indication for the same cell, same cell type is uh, critical limb ischemia, where we're in the phase one. Um, and then the news actually, uh, uh, two weeks ago, we treated our first patient with our second product, which is a human uh, retinal progenitor cell. Um, we licensed that in from Harvard uh, a few years ago. Uh, we we spent a long time working on that to make sure that this is, um, uh, uh, that we can manufacture it. Like uh, Haim said just before, manufacturing in this industry is extremely important. Um, and uh, we were able to, uh, we had a breakthrough when we figured out that we needed to lower the oxygen uh, when we produce these cells in order to mimic life in the back of the eye. So we went down to 3% oxygen and then we were able to produce them very beautifully. Um, so that has now uh, taken the step. Uh, we have a single center study, phase one, two study, um, at uh, Massachusetts Eye and Ear uh, in Boston. Eric Pierce is the primary investigator. Uh, and two weeks ago we treated the first patient. It was a 40 minute procedure. Uh, patient went uh, home the same day, so that was a, a great start to the study, uh, and we will finish that phase one portion uh, this year, and then the phase two portion will be done early uh, next year. So it is a great new program for us. Uh, the indication is not AMD, it's RP, so retinitis pigmentosa. Uh, retinitis pigmentosa is um, inherited degenerative disease. Um, it's an orphan, but it's a very big orphan. Uh, 275,000 patients in US and Europe combined uh, for that indication. Um, Spark Therapeutics, you might have heard of, uh, they do treat the same uh, uh, indication with their gene therapy. 
however, they did treat patients who have an RPE 65 gene deficiency, which is 1 to 3 percent of the patient population. Uh, we're obviously gene uh, independent, so we can treat all of the patients if we're successful. Um, so those are the three programs. Um, uh, the uh, magic uh, dust on top of this is exosomes, so we do research on exosomes. Um, we are able to harvest exosomes straight out of the media uh, when we produce our stem cells. So uh, we're lucky that we have that advantage. We're a, a UK listed company, uh, very well backed and well funded. Uh, the uh, investors you see here are uh, the ones you need to have on board uh, in the UK. Um, and uh, we did a capital raise uh, last, um, uh, last summer, um, which means that we're very well capitalized. Uh, our market cap right now is $150 million. Uh, two thirds of that is cash uh, on the balance sheet. And uh, what we can do with that cash is to complete everything that we plan uh, to do. So this is the milestones uh, for the next uh, two, three years. So the cash is kind of a three year runway to, to do all of these things. Uh, stroke, we finished phase one. We're doing a phase two uh, right now. We'll have the data uh, in the middle of this year. And then if we like the data, we will kick off a pivotal uh, study, uh, controlled study in, in chronic stroke. So three to 12 months post-stroke is most likely how we do that. Uh, CLI, we will uh, finish the phase one that's ongoing now. We will do a phase two. We're not going to push that uh, too far ahead because it's a very tricky patient population. So we're going to make sure we know how to walk before we run too fast on that one. Um, RP is going to move very fast. Um, it is two, two studies to get to goal. Uh, we need to finish the ongoing phase one, two study. After that, there will be a pivotal study. That's, that's what it takes uh, to get to goal. And uh, again, we plan to have that done within this window that we're talking about. Uh, at the bottom here, you see exosomes. Our goal is to get them into a phase one study, uh, most likely in, in oncology. Thank you very much. And uh, with that, I will uh, let uh, Jason take over. Good, good. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about data. So tell me about the current stroke phase two study. I know you have data coming in second half of the, in first half of this year. Uh, what's the timing for that data? How, what's the design of that trial? What are the endpoints? And you know, we're going to look for a signal, right? So help us understand what you're expecting. Uh, indeed, we have uh, um, already in the bag uh, 11 patients in the phase one study. Uh, the ongoing study is a single arm uh, phase two study with 21 patients. Uh, we will have that data right at the end of the first half. Um, there, there is a third study that we don't really talk, uh, I didn't uh, say anything about, but it is uh, an observational study uh, in 110 patients that have not been treated um, that we're following just to make sure we have something to compare to uh, since there is no placebo arm in that phase two study. Uh, it's very difficult to, I think ethically not possible to do a placebo arm that early in, in, in this program. I think in phase three we will have sham surgery um, as control. So yeah, so this summer we'll have the opportunity to look at um, 11 plus 21 plus the control group, um, and then we will make a decision what the next steps are. In so terms of data, um, most of the data, most of the, there are a lot of different ways of measuring stroke recovery. Uh, most of them are aimed at acute stroke, um, not chronic stroke recovery, which is a very different thing. Uh, what we see other people do, I mean, modified ranking uh, score, that's the most typical one for acute stroke. Um, it's a scale from zero to six, zero you uh, have no symptoms and six you're dead. So it's a very, uh, not very big steps in that, uh, and not a very sensitive scale, but FDA likes it. Uh, what we see other people do, we see uh, Moderna do um, um, uh, walking distance. Uh, we see other people do Fugelmeyer. Uh, so we're, we're measuring most of these things in our study, so we have an opportunity to look at the data and decide what the right endpoint is, together with regulators, of course. What, what I'm trying to understand is that with a, a 11 treated patients, right? So, so with 11 treated patients, how, or do all patients have the same size stroke, the same physical location in stroke? And then also couple that with the cells are delivered <laughs> surgically delivered. Yep. What, how, how is that done? It's, and, and, and at what time point were these patients? In other words, if you had one patient at three months, one at six months, one at nine months, you might expect very different results. So I'm trying to put myself into your shoes and say, you know, w what am I going to see from this data? How do, I, how do I interpret this data? 
Yeah, so from the, from the phase one study, we had patients between six months and five years post-stroke, so that was a quite a big uh, range. Uh, we didn't really see any trends of different efficacy depending on how long post-stroke it was. Uh, you would have expected early would be better because things were fresher, but we didn't see that. Um, but obviously, it's a small patient population. Um, in phase two, we changed it to go closer to the stroke anyhow. Um, the protocol says two to 12 months. Um, it kind of helps to put a little urgency on doctors <laughs> so they don't uh, get too lazy with inclusion. So that puts some urgency on it uh, when you limit that to two to 12 months. So, so that's what we've done there. Um, the, the, it, this is ischemic stroke. Um, and basically, you need, um, uh, you need enough space uh, next to where the lesion is to put the cells. So if there's really no space to put the cells, that's an exclusion criteria. Uh, other than that, we can, we can treat really all ischemic patients. Um, we, we have uh, an age limit, um, so we treat relatively elderly patients for the moment. Uh, it's 40 years plus. Um, and uh, because I think in the group 18 to 40, there are usually other reasons for the stroke. So um, yeah, so that's the inclusion criteria. And um, this is stereotactic surgery, MRI guided. Uh, there's one borehole. So this is standard stuff if you're a brain surgeon. It, it's it's it, not rocket science, uh, but it's brain surgery. The next closest thing maybe, right? Um, how do you account for the variability of stroke though? In other words, how about do all patients have the same type of ischemic stroke in the same area of the brain or is it okay if it's in different areas of the brain and difference, you know, how much damage has occurred? Uh, you got, it, it has to be ischemic stroke. You have to be able to get there and you have to be able to put the cells in, in healthy tissue. Okay, but, it, but, but even there, there's, in other words, when we say ischemic stroke, there's probably 50 different types of ischemic stroke. So or, or how do you compare the expected control rate given the fact that in a small end value, it's going to be hard to know whether you've got a signal or not? Yeah, I, I don't think it matters what kind of, you know, where the stroke happened. Uh, subcortal, I guess, is the, where most of it is. Uh, so that would be the, the big bulk of it. Okay. Um, so help me understand what data you would focus investors on. And, and by the way, I have to say to you, congratulations on raising capital. You know, you are a bit of an anomaly in the microcap cell therapy space in that you are funded with 100 million, I think you said over 100 million dollars, uh, and three years worth of funding. So, you know, not an easy task and, and maybe an interesting reflection of you or, or maybe where you're located and, and your relationship with those funds. What are those funds expecting from you over the next three years? What data are you looking for? I, I, well, I think what the investors uh, liked um, when we presented this to them is that we have um, s multiple shots on goal. Uh, we have two different cell therapy products uh, with three different indications, um, and we have a very interesting research platform with exosomes. Uh, they expect us to be data-driven uh, and discontinue programs that we don't believe in and, con and invest more in programs that we do believe in, and, and the belief should be data-based. Um, of course, in a beautiful world, all of these programs will continue, uh, but success in one single program has a value which is many multiples our current market cap. So, you know, we will be data driven. And, and, you know, I caught what you said about Spark Therapeutics and RP as an indication. And what I sense from you is that you're actually really excited about RP and you think that that program could move very quickly, maybe even at some point become a lead program. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. Um, uh, the eye is a great organ to, to, uh, to do work in. Um, you, know, you get uh, feedback very, very quickly in that you treat uh, one eye um, and not the other. So really from patient number one, um, you're starting to have an opportunity to see if your product works. Um, you, uh, we treat one eye, but we measure both. Uh, and uh, uh, you do that from patient number one. So that's very different from, from stroke and, and other indications. So that's great. And there, what are you going to be measuring for an outcome? I know in the stem cells trial, they were looking at geographic atrophy. Is that going to be a similar indication for you? So uh, retinitis pigmentosa is, uh, is an indication um, where a patient lose their peripheral vision first. So it lasts decades before they go blind, but they end up being completely blind. Uh, and you, they get more and more tunnel vision. 
um, and uh, it's obviously a scary uh, disease to have because you know what's coming. Um, so you need to measure peripheral vision rather than just visual acuity. Um, the, uh, the goal is not only to stop the loss of vision, but actually to restore uh, vision that has been lost. And, and the way we do that is that our, our cells, in this case, integrate. Um, uh, we inject it uh, into the back of the eye, so we detach the retina temporarily. Um, we put the retinal cells um, uh, into a bleb. Um, they will uh, move across the retina, like single cell uh, layer across the retina, and they will replace lost photoreceptors, so they will um, differentiate into photoreceptors and replace the ones that lost. Um, obviously, we have to see if this is going to uh, mean that they have restored vision and that the light comes back on again, but th that is the goal. Um, and obviously, it will be a huge, huge uh, um, uh, move forward if we can manage this. Thank you so much. Thanks for the rundown on the programs. And again, we look forward to uh, watching the progress from Reneuron. Thank, Thank you. you.